Welcome once again to The Breakfast. Uh, of course, uh, we're going straight to the newspapers this morning uh, to share with you what the major stories are saying. I'm starting with the Punch newspapers uh, to see as much of it as we can take uh, this Monday morning. Uh, the first one there says, Uncertainty surrounds vaccination in Kano, Oshun, Delta, and eight others. In Oshun State, it says, We've submitted workers' list to appropriate quarters. Ikiti, Lagos, Imo, Kaduna and eight others meet all criteria. Uh, we can also see on the punch this morning, EFCC helping to retrieve 11 billion naira in bank and 6 billion naira stolen, says the NHIS. Unprecedented looting happening under Buhari's watch, says the PDP. And also we spend 966 billion naira on pipeline repairs, an MPC replies AUGF. Banks woo customers with new CBN four dollar or rather naira for dollar policy. Uh, we also can find out upon just one compel headsmen leaders to produce farmers killers. PDP tells fire me. EFCC invites Ondo speaker uh, collect uh, and collect rather over alleged fraud. Police and hunters comb forest as gunmen abduct two fresh Oshun travelers. Buhari. Bajabia Mila, Tinubu, and others hail Oshimbajo at uh, 64. Also on the punch this morning, power sector loses 59.33 billion naira despite 5,802 megawatts peak generation. Controversy as Nigerian music label owner dies in Ghana as the artist, of course, is arrested. Uh, we also can find all your OPC members detained for handing over arrested Wakili. That's a little controversial story, and uh, I hope that we can, you know, go through it uh, this morning. Apparently, you know, it says that um, one of the, um, the well, I'm not sure, you know, headsmen um, or leaders or one of the, you know, um, Fulani leaders in, the, in that state uh, was arrested by OPC members or was, you know, captured by OPC members. Um, apparently, the one, I believe, had, who had challenged Sunday Boho at, at some point to a gun duel. Um, and so after he was, you know, arrested by OPC members, uh, the police then, of course, has arrested those OPC members. So it's a little controversial, controversial and I hope that we can get some clarification on what exactly um, the um, story says. Uh, we're meant to have Libra Soshoma on, on uh, line this morning, and I hope that we can uh, quickly connect with us. But so just before we get that, I also want to speak on the... EFCC invites uh, Undo Speaker and Clerk over alleged fraud. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I believe sometime last week we had a conversation on uh, corruption um, and um, um, the arrest of certain persons, um, you know, in the fight against corruption. And I felt it was necessary that it is said that when we have governors, you know, former, you know, heads of, you know, certain agencies or, you know, um, um, people in uh, political positions arrested or accused of corruption, we seem to forget that it's not just the governor who, I mean, and of course I'm using governors as example now. Um, it's not just the governor who should be held responsible for missing billions of naira in any establishment, in any, any state. Uh -huh. Same way um, when, when we hear about monies that were stolen from parastatals, you know, MDAs and the likes. It's, it's never really just one person who diverts funds. No governor wakes up in the morning and goes to the you know, state treasury and packs the money inside his suitcase and runs away. Nobody steals two billion naira you know, in, you know, in his suitcase. And even if he did, there was somebody watching over the um, treasury. There was somebody watching over the vault when those things were taken. And so these billions of naira that are stolen are stolen with the help of other people in government. They're stolen with the help of the Commissioner for Finance, still with the help of Commissioner for this or that, the clerk, the Auditor General. It's, it's, a, it's a web of people that need to answer these crimes. And I hope that we can get to a place as a country where our criminal justice system realizes that it's, it's everybody who, who should be held responsible should be held responsible. Everybody in that web. And, and that's why I keep talking about systems. We need systems that fight corruption, we do, not indeed. just heads of, you know, the AFCC or the ICPC. We need actual systems that make it difficult for you to steal. Because if you are asking that a particular amount of money be signed off, you know, in one direction or signed to a particular bank account, or you're asking that money, uh, funds that were gotten from foreign loans 
be diverted into something else. There are people who should be in those positions that should say, no, that, that, that's not the way it works. The I system agree. wouldn't allow me to do this. But when those things happen, and then two years after a governor leaves position, then there is now an EFCC probe of a missing 8 billion naira or 7 billion naira, and everybody focuses on the governor. And once again, apologies to governors. I'm using you guys as examples this morning. Everybody focuses on the governor and leaves out the, you know, every single person who is in that system who should be held responsible for those missing funds. Yes, but it, it's good to see that there's a new person, a younger person, who seems to be coming with lots of enthusiasm to fight corruption. And we've been seeing lots of uh, activities and work off the EFCC on the front page of the newspaper. So let's, let's hope that we can get some progress and work done. Also, one of the biggest issues um, at the moment is about the coronavirus vaccination. Uh, on the punch, it says, uncertainty, uncertainty surrounds vaccination in Kano, Oshun, Delta, and eight others. Okay, so regarding this vaccination, we know that President Muhammad Buhari and Vice President Yemir Shimbajo took the COVID-19 vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, live on television on Saturday. Exactly. To be honest, I felt really scared seeing just how much the injection went into the skin. But obviously we know this is for for your good. You know, even if even if you're scared of needles like I am, it's something you have to, you know, you have to face because, you know, it's for not just your safety but also for that of other people around you. So the controversy here is about health workers least. We know that the federal government announced a coronavirus registration uh, vaccination registration form, you know, asking Nigerians to go online and register. If you're a health worker, you needed to specify. If you, you know, are in other professions, you needed to specify as well. So one would think that that online registration form was the government's way of keeping a tally of all who needed to take the vaccine because they also asked you how old you were and you know just all this vital information that would enable them you know properly determine where to channel their vaccination drive to but um strange to see today that uh, there's now a new health workers list where all state governments or all states are required to send a list of all healthcare workers for them to vaccinate so you don't wonder if we had a, a if we had a vaccination list online and now a health workers list what what are the list or what are the criteria would the government be putting out here and uh, the government is saying that 11 states of the federation uh, is yet to receive um, lists from 11 states of the federation and uh, that includes states that are yet to submit a list of health workers include Kano, Kogi, Oshun, Bayelsa, Cross River, Delta, Bornu, Gombe, Jigawa, Katsina and Taraba. So if you're from those states, you, you maybe need to start, you know, asking your government to do what it needs to do. Also, they, they mentioned that they, they were yet to receive updates from different states regarding the a vaccination operation room, saying some states were yet to set up a vaccination operation room and that until those rooms are set up, for it to you know, be guaranteed that those states are able to receive the vaccination, receive the vaccine doses and store them appropriately. They will not you know, send or distribute those vaccines to those countries. So it's, it's, it's shocking to see that in March, you know, about two months after the first vaccine was supposed to have arrived in Nigeria in January, we're still having all these technical logistics issues yet to be sorted out. No wonder that fake news really gained traction the other time when you know, it made around that... Uh, WHO has disqualified Nigeria because we failed to have all these criteria for storing the vaccine at appropriate temperatures. So right now, the MPA, MPHCDA, according to them, they're expecting updates from state governments, you know, as to the um, if they've set up operation rooms to store the vaccines and list of healthcare workers who need to be vaccinated in those states. And, and it's one of the reasons, you know, we had brought it up um uh, last week when we spoke with the Minister of State for Health. Um, and of course, you know, one of the questions that I also asked him, um, what's the use of this registration list that mm. Nigerians are filling yes. you know, these forms? If we, if we already have stated that these vaccines are going to be going to government officials, um, well, not all government officials, but certain government officials, healthcare workers, you know, there's a priority list, uh, those above, you know, 60 and, 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 and all of that. Mm -hmm. We first of all don't have, I'm sure that we have, if we're going to look at the number of healthcare workers in quote, 
um, across the country. We, of course, I, in those 3.92 million, we would have, you know, taken a good 40% of that. Um, if we then look at, you know, who's, you know, government that needs to be vaccinated, we've taken, you know, another, you know, bulk of that already. Uh -huh. um, so what's the use really of people getting registered? Is it, you know, while we wait for the 16 or the, you know, 16 yes. or 13 million vaccines to arrive? Um, and of course, you know, are they going to be looking at the list and saying, oh, you know, you're just 25? No, we would, you know, put your hold first. Okay. Look at this one who's 60 who would vaccinate that person. So there, there would, you know, obviously be some, you know, so, some confusion here and there with regards to the use of the vaccination list. And also over the weekend, I saw a few people getting vaccinated that I know are not healthcare workers, that I know, you know, are not in any way government officials. They are just, you know, random people. So what really is the I, protocol for vaccination? Exactly. I also saw the head of a, ch a particular church. I'm not sure what, um, the um, I don't want to make a mistake, you know, it's either Kumi or Kumui or Ashimu Lowo, I'm not sure. But one of them, I saw a picture of him, him this morning getting vaccinated. A popular pastor. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm also not, you know, 100% sure, you know, if he's a government worker or a healthcare worker or, you know, church leader as well. We know also about controversies in other countries where, you know, simply because you know the minister, simply because you know somebody in power, you know, you get the coronavirus vaccine. I really don't know if that's the case here because if the government is saying priority first goes to people who are 60, 65 and above or healthcare workers and you're not in any of those categories and it's the first week of the vaccination drive and you're getting the vaccines, I believe questions should be asked. You Absolutely. Know? So let's move on to the Guardian newspaper now. The big one here says anxiety over fake COVID-19 vaccines. Any COVID-19 vaccines not through government channels should be considered as counterfeit, and that's according to experts. Guild of Medical Doctors security experts call for more robust surveillance to check fake COVID-19 vaccines. Once NAVDAC to test all batches of COVID-19 vaccines, also gender parity and equity resonate as women reject discrimination. Troops kill bandits as others sustain injuries in Kaduna. Again, Southeast Governor's leaders shun Pali on 2023 political aspiration. 17 die, 30 injured in Kano auto crashes. Forex shortage, a crisis foretold. You see, for the story about COVID-19 vaccines, Interpol has said about 400 vitals, that's equivalent to about 2,400 doses of fake COVID-19 vaccines were intercepted in South Africa. And they also recovered face masks from three Chinese nationals and a Zambian. So definitely in a situation like this, like with what's happening, I don't think it's surprising to me to see that fake vaccinations are becoming a concern for stakeholders in the health sector in Nigeria. Because if were, were concerned about the quantity of the vaccines. Only 3.94 million arrived in Nigeria last yes. Tuesday. So it means we don't even have enough. And if from reports we're seeing that the people who should be getting these vaccines first are not, and some other people are, you know, jumping queues, I, I, I'm not shocked that this is happening here. So, the, and also, another, another issue about this coronavirus vaccine what broke out over the weekend, the Minister of Health, Dr. Saige Ehanire, talking about coronavirus vaccination certificates and that it to be it to soon be a criteria to travel for you to have this COVID-19 certificate. But people have been asking questions regarding if you've taken the coronavirus vaccine and, or rather, if you've taken the vaccine, yes, and you get the coronavirus certificate, would you still be required to take a COVID-19 test when you need to travel? So there's just so much issues that the government needs to actually address regarding COVID-19. I believe the government should be speaking to the people more. We should be having the government, you know, chasing after the media to make sure that you are in people's faces, giving them the information they need to know yeah, well, regarding COVID-19 vaccines. The, the, the PTF and, of course, uh, the... Uh um, NCDC would have to step in and clarify, you know, some of all of that um, when when the time is right, mm -hmm. even if the time has been right for a bit. But I'm sure that they will clarify some of all of that. But also on the Guardian, quickly before we move to another paper, uh, the story on the um, Southeast governors and leaders Sean Parley mm -hmm. on 2023 po political aspiration. Uh, there's people who have said that um, pre the president, the presidential seat, is not handed to anybody. It's not given to anybody. Mm -hmm. It is not something that, you know, someone's going to PT you and give you because, oh, it's your turn. Um, it's also very important, just a reminder to them, that it's, it's also very important that they put their house in order. The political space in the Southeast, um, they need to put it in order. They need to, in every single way, uh, come together and understand how, if it is that important, 
for them to get somebody from the southeast and in Asorok um, in 2020, um, 2023, then they should put their house in order and ensure that they uh, work towards that. Um, you, nobody's going to dash it to you. At the same time, it's a reminder that Nigerians are becoming wiser and their demands are becoming clearer. Um, no one is going to, uh, by 2023, I hope that we reach that level of political awareness that lets us understand that we need someone with the qualifications, we need someone with the, um, with the uh, capabilities to actually run um, the affairs of Nigeria. Mm. Not because of your tribe, not because it's your turn, not because of um, federal character, but someone who actually has the capabilities of being in that position. Yeah, yeah, Bilo also has been, you know, trying to get in there. He has been, you know, making certain moves to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. put himself, you know, in, in, in a running, you know, seat. I don't know if he will get there, if he will get a political party that will endorse him. But it's important that everybody is aware that regardless of what part of the country you're from, Nigerians, I hope by 2023, would have the level of political awareness to say we don't, we're not bothered about what part of the country you're from. We mm. want someone you know, um, um, of, of quality, someone who um, we trust will be able to put Nigeria in the right direction. Look at where yes. Okonjo is now. Um, she's not there because of her political godfathers. She's not be there because, oh, she's from the South and it's her turn. lots of opposition. Yes, you know. You know. So, so there is that. Let's move quickly to um, other papers this morning. The Nation, we can quickly drag a few from The Nation. Wage talks by states. Um, federal government rejects reps plan manhunt for gunmen after ife ibad on road kidnap also nigeria records 13 trillion naira fixed income and currency deals as in business six billion naira withdrawn from nhis accounts says the ceo and also um rest in peace over the weekend uh, justice nguta uh, died um, 23 days to his retirement. He was one of those who was arrested by the EFCC. Um, or had their doors broken it down um, in, uh, in the night in 20, 2015, I believe. Um, Buhari, Umay, and others pay tributes. Also on the nation this morning, um, injured um, in Undo, NURTW members uh, clash. Oh, once again, um, another jam May 400 millionaire from change of birth dates. And also this morning, police, the lead one that you can see, police arrest OPC members of a header kidnap suspect. I'm not sure why. Quara APC, group frowns at government takeover of, of alleged um, assault suit. Um, I hope that, you know, with time, we can clarify exactly what the OPC members um, or why they were arrested. Um, okay, according to the, the, the story here I'm seeing, they said the police in Oyo State confirmed that they detained three members of the Odua People's Congress, OPC, who were part of the team that, you know, arrested a notorious Fulani warlord, Iskuli Wakili, on okay. Sunday morning. So they, they're, they're warning people that, you know, if you're involved in criminal activities, you would be arrested. So it's just the whole uh, issue about the farmers' head clashes in you know, your state. Uh, basically, it's, you know, the police are saying that three OPC members were detained for alleged murder in Assen, and that one person even died in the process of, you know, the arrest. Oh. And that uh, the house of the warlord was also set a place. Oh, okay. That makes makes more sense now. Yeah. All right, but um, those are the major stories on the nation. Can we, we have time to quickly move to um, hopefully the Tribune this morning. Yeah. Okay, so um, still the story here, excitement, suspected Ibarakpa warlord. Excitement as OPC arrest notorious Fulani Wakili. Hands him and three others over to police. Police arrest OPC men who arrested him and accuse them of murder and arson. Wakili, age 78, uh, due to frail appearance, taken to hospital, and that's according to police. Bono governor uncovers fake 550 households in Meduguri IDP camps. Food strike. Southern and Middle Belt leaders kick over demand for compensation by cattle dealers and others. Fire outside Villa was likely caused by cigarettes. That's according to the presidency. FG will not grab land from states for ranching. And the CBN here is explaining why they introduced the five naira rebates for every one dollar remitted to Nigeria. I will mention earlier that we'll be speaking about this in detail during the course of the program. And uh, Fire Me here is uh, 
lamenting the killing of Ikiti farmers by herdsmen, saying this is one killing too many. Four cattle herders killed in Alhambra, Mieti Allah alleges. 24 hours after abduction of staff, gunmen yet to reach out, Nama, and leaders and the power of business reform. And that's a, a leadership management uh, article there. Okay. So basically, those are the stories here on the front page of uh, the Nigerian Tribune. Yeah. Uh, the food strike issue is still going on. The federal government is still having talks with concerned parties, you know, people in the South and middle belt leaders. You know, we know that um, the Mieti Alla uh, Cattle Breeders Association are demanding about 45 billion naira as compensation for, you know, their cattle that were killed, members that were also killed. And, and we know about the food strike, but how that, that was eventually called off. So um, it's yet to be seen what the outcome of that meeting would be. And what the government would eventually, you know, decide on this matter. Um, it, it's, it's, I, I wouldn't knock off anybody who, you know, feels like they need to be compensated. You know, but you know, my question really is, you know, who do you demand compensation from? Is it from the government? Um, is it also maybe because of failure of the government to protect their lands and property? Has the government been able to arrest anybody who, you know, they would hold responsible for the, you know, for uh, the destruction? Um, of you know lives and property, um, what exactly you know you know or how exactly should it play out? Um, if those people were arrested, you know, that's a, it's a different case. You know, if you arrest them and then you know you charge them to court, you ask them to pay back for what you know ever they destroyed. But if since you fail to arrest anybody, I guess you know the government then has to pay for all of that. And it's the same thing with um, the destruction that happened during the you know at the end of the NSARS protests. You know, who exactly should? Uh, yes. be sued you know should the government also be be asked questions about its failure so to protect lagos so little um, arrest, yes. to protect lagos at that time because if you de declare a curfew and you don't have enough security um, arrangements to protect the, the state then you should be held i believe you should be held responsible for the failure you know um for the destruction that, that went on but something else um the Borno government um, um the Borno governor rather zulum mm -hmm. who stormed an idp camp um late at night oh. maybe around midnight or 1 a.m <laughs> and discovered that there were hundreds of those in the IDP camps that weren't registered as IDPs. Mm -hmm. They basically come there, take food, and go. Um, and, then, of course, enjoy the benefits, you know, that, um, you know, the IDPs are meant to enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas those who those uh, food, you know, food items were, you know, set for, you know, of course, obviously now start to get less than they, you know, should be getting. Mm. Um, so, yes, you might say, oh, you know, it's just the attitude of greedy Nigerians, it's the attitude, you know, of a failure. Um, you know, well, Nigerians always trying to, you know, steal, you know, where, the, where it isn't kept for them. But I would also remind people that um, it is also, you know, a sign of the level of poverty in those regions. Yes, there's a humanitarian crisis. Yes, there's if you would leave your house... related malnutrition. If, if you would leave issues. your house and go to an IDP camp so that you can get foodstuff... It also tells the level of poverty and hunger that exists in those regions. Those so the governor might be driving be them out. <laughs> they probably should. So the governor might be driving them out and saying, you know, this food is not meant for you. Mm -hmm. But he also has questions to ask as to why those people are coming there and why they are so poor and why they don't have food at home. These questions should go back to him also, as he, you know, you know, does his police work at one a.m. Um, in IDP camps. So, all right. Yeah, that's it. Lots of issues to discuss. So little time. Thanks for staying tuned on off the press. Uh, sadly, we couldn't bring in Libros Oshama for a few issues, and uh, we'll take a break here and return to discuss this day in history. <laughs>